What's up guys, this is Nick at stridewise.com. Uh, if you're new here, this is where I look at men's boots and high-end casual wear. Uh, also, if you're new here, I would really love it if you could subscribe. It really helps the channel and helps me make content like this about very nice kind of expensive jackets. Why wax canvas jackets? Well, I'll give you three reasons. Number one, canvas is very densely woven cotton that is extremely durable and resistant to tears and abrasions. So you don't need to worry about twigs and thorns slicing it open, which actually did happen to a leather jacket of mine in the past. Leather can get cut open a lot more easily than canvas. Number two, the wax provides added water resistance. So this is a strategy that dates back to sailors when they would notice that their sails would catch more wind when they were wet. So to kind of mimic that effect, to make the sails less porous, they would wax them. And that also made the rain kind of roll right off of it. So that caught on to uh, like jackets and tents and the coats and bags and so on. Wax canvas is like this really durable, old fashioned way of making like rugged wear that uh, will not wet through and won't get too wet. Number three, wax canvas looks really cool. And we're all guys here, we can admit that coolness is an important factor in buying a jacket. What's more is that like jeans and leather boots, wax canvas gets cool looking as it gets older. It softens, the wax gives it a lot of depth of color, you get like honeycomb like creases around flex points. It's, a, it's really cool, people, it's like a patina cheat code is what Karl Marowski said, another YouTuber. Plus it's cheaper than leather, and like I said earlier, there are some arguments to be made that it's better than leather. I won't say it is, I just really miss that leather jacket that I cut open on a nail and I know that that wouldn't have happened if it were canvas, so yeah, there are some upsides. Anyway, Let's get to the picks. I'll split this list up into the best overall, the coolest, the best value, and the toughest with a couple of runners up and honorable mentions along the way. I made a lot of videos at wax jackets and they tend to fall into two categories. Super rugged, functional, outdoorsy ones, and more fashionable ones that take their style cues from denim jackets and chore coats more than jackets for hunting and hiking and stuff. The first pick on this list is a jacket that combines those two categories the best. In my opinion, it will appeal to the widest range of dudes. It's the Tensor Jacket from Tom Beckby. This actually comes from a heritage-inspired hunting apparel company. I'm the first to admit that most of that company's stuff is like a little too southern dad for me, but their flagship jacket has become a phenomenon in waxed canvas world. It's very intently designed as something that can go from the field to a restaurant. It's not the dressiest jacket in the entire world, but for an outdoors jacket, it looks a lot cooler and more subtle than most functional apparel. It's got pockets all over the place, a stand-up cord collar, this eight ounce or six ounce canvas if you want the lighter version, and it's got this cool red lining to represent Alabama clay because the brand was born in the South. Anyway, most guys like wax canvas for a rugged look, and this is a really rugged jacket that can actually hold its own both in the forest and here in Manhattan. It does cost 495 bucks and it comes in three or four colors. If you don't want a roomy fit that's made for mobility and like the ability to add a bunch of layers for winter hunts, I suggest sizing down and getting a tall. That's what I did. I got a medium tall instead of a large. Number two, the coolest wax jacket. I'm sure half of you already know what it'll be, but it is the Ridgeline Supply Jacket from Rogue Territory. I guess I'd call Tom Beckby the most functional wax jacket or the best functional jacket or you know, whatever language makes this video more clicky. But as I said earlier, there are two categories of wax jacket. And if you're in the market for one that leans into minimalist coolness, it's a supply jacket. Now, this jacket, James Bond wears it in No Time to Die. Now, come on, James Bond wearing something is the best seal of approval of coolness that anyone could want. But I bought this before I knew that, before it was in the movie. Because independent of Bond, this is a massively influential jacket in the space. The canvas is a bit thicker than the Tensor at 10 ounces per square yard, but it is unlined, which is uh, important to note. So it's a way simpler jacket than the Beckby, which is like designed to be a functional hunting jacket as well. Uh, this again is more city friendly. You just get two hand warmer pockets and an interior one as well here, and an almost unusably shallow and sleek chest pocket, but you can fit your phone or a sleek wallet in there or something. Cause like sleek and cool is the name of the game here. Other potential advantages over the Beckby is that it's got thicker canvas and it's a very deliberately slim fit. Uh, which again is going to be handy for guys who want a more modern sort of look. The slim fit though was also the biggest downside with this jacket because there are some people it just doesn't fit. If you're a husky or dude, um, there's a good chance that this jacket is just going to be like out of bounds for you. But check out my full video for a full discussion on sizing for this one. It's a little bit tricky to figure out. This is also 
the cheapest jacket on this list thus far out of two whole picks at 295 bucks which for an American-made canvas jacket isn't too bad, although it is unlined. If you want a lined jacket, they actually have a lined version of this jacket that you can get for an extra 100 bucks. Oh, and you can also get in like a huge range of colors and fabrics, way more than you can get with Tom Beckby, because you know, this brand knows it's cool. As a runner-up for the coolest wax jacket, I wanted to mention another one because it's so hard to land on one as the coolest wax jacket. I looked at a lot of others. I quite like Red Cloud's Collective. Uh, Bradley Mountain's jackets are pretty cool as well. Pack Animal sent me theirs, um, but I didn't like it, so don't get theirs. I decided though, ultimately, to put Freenote Cloths as a runner-up for coolest wax jacket. This is a different design to Rogue Territories. It's a pleated design that they call a mixture of a classic ranch jacket and a riding jacket. It's a bit more interesting to look at, especially because the lining has this really cool southwestern print that actually is made in Japan. So it's really, really cool. It is lined and it costs 400 bucks right now, which is about the same as Rogue Territory's lined jacket. So yeah, different look, also very cool. You probably like one or the other. All right, next up is the best value waxed jacket. Now you may have balked at the price of these jackets so far, but I'm telling you, I've looked around and if you want a canvas jacket that is waxed and is made in the USA, it's pretty damn hard to get of under 300 bucks. Like that's just the, the threshold that every company has landed at except for Flint and Tinder, who make perhaps the most popular wax jacket on this scene. It's got over a thousand reviews on their website, and not coincidentally, it is the best value wax jacket, I think. This one will run you 268 bucks right now, and it's lined with flannel. So that puts it in the ballpark of uh, like 400 bucks, if you're looking at most other brands. If it's lined in a wax canvas and it's made in America, typically it's up at 400 bucks. This is well under $300. Huckberry is the vendor of this, and Huckberry also has sales now and then, like a lot more often than other brands do. And it's available in over half a dozen colors, depending on what's in stock. So it's made in the US with seven ounce sail cloth from New Jersey, and it's a trucker jacket as well. So it's uh, not quite as sleek as Rogue Territories. It's like got that slightly boxier, uh, more forgiving trucker jacket fit. And uh, this is more like a jacket that's modeled after an old Type 1 Levi's jacket. So it's very, very casual but it just looks fantastic. Again, it's got over a thousand reviews, so it's gotten so popular. There are a couple of other versions as well. There's a wool lined one for winter, and there's an unlined one for warmer weather. I actually also got the unlined one, uh, and I don't recommend it because the cotton feels like really sticky on your arms, but this flannel lined jacket, it's pretty hard to beat. A runner up for best value, I think is Iron and Resin. That's a brand that I think everyone should check out. They're like a, a bit motorbike focused as a brand, but their canvas jackets are pretty everyman and can be worn by, you know, every man. Um, they're, they're pretty well known for their Rambler jacket, which was their first jacket. It's 12 ounces and made in America and 275 bucks. So practically the same price as Flint and Tinder, although it is unlined. But I still encourage you to click around their site because they have a really wide range of American-made canvas jackets. There's this cool fleece-lined one at 350 bucks. And this one is their mechanic jacket, if it's still available. That's really good value at 190 bucks, but that one is imported, if that matters to you. But yeah, Iron Resin, surprisingly wide range of canvas and wax canvas jackets. Next is the cheapest, like the cheapest, decent waxed jacket. <laughs> I decided to drop this category in here because there are cheaper options than Flint and Tinder if you don't mind that the jacket is not made in the USA. This kind of jacket, like the wax canvas jacket, is considered by many as like a symbol of rugged, hardworking Americans. So people tend to like these jackets American made. But if you'd rather save some cash and get something cool, Taylor Stitch has one that's made in China. If you gravitate toward this sort of like heritage or vintage or classic Americana type clothing that Taylor Stitch does. They do it very well with the same fabrics and with more modern fits than a lot of other heritage brands out there. But they are cheaper than other heritage brands because just about everything is made in China. So the tobacco wax canvas is the material and importantly, the material is developed by Hallie Stevenson's in Scotland. And the cotton is organic, which is actually meaningful. Like organic cotton produces half as much CO2 it uses 70% less water. There's a few other cool things about organic cotton that make it actually like uh, not just like a silly trend. Like it's, it's pretty meaningful. Uh, and this jacket is 188 bucks right now. Actually right now it's on sale, but I'm sure that won't last. Uh, but Taylor Stitch does do sales now and then. The style is Taylor Stitch's very famous long haul jacket, which is also available in a bunch of other materials like wool and shishiko and denim. And it's a bit like a trucker jacket too, but with more of a modern athletic fit. Just note that some varieties of this jacket have limited stock, but uh, I'm pretty sure if you head to the site at the link below, you'll, you'll find something waxed there. Next is the thickest wax jacket. 
It's the legendary Wills jacket from Ship John. It's so thick that at 24 ounces per square inch, which is more than two times heavier than anything else on this list, it stands up on its own when you get it. I should note that this one is twill, not canvas, which is a slightly different and more complex kind of densely woven cotton. It looks a bit more like denim than canvas does, but it's still wax, it's still cotton, it's still thick as hell, still very, very tear resistant and abrasion resistant. My buddy Troy has this one. He had his for about three years and filmed a video about it. He's thoroughly obsessed with it and loves how it's aged. The downside is that at about 500 bucks, it's the priciest on this list. And while it is made in America in a very small independent business, which people typically like, it's very hard to order. They open up for sales like once every month or two and they always shut down orders that same day and usually that same hour because there are so many people on their mailing list that are clamoring to get this jacket. But if you're patient and you subscribe to the mailing list, uh, this is a thoroughly, thoroughly bomb-proof super jacket and you'll fall in love with it. All right, that'll about do it. I thought seven would be a good number to end on here, but I want to do an honorable mention of the Tanuki Yoroi jacket, which is canvas, but it's not waxed. So I guess I can't officially put it on this list, but it is so insanely thick at 25 ounces per square yard. I know Ship John's is 24 ounces, but that's waxed. Unwaxed is 18 ounces. So Tanuki's has like 40% thicker cotton. Usually canvas that thick is too rough to wear, but they wash it with biodegradable enzymes so that it's softer when you get it. Mine is blue because I wanted a blue jacket I could wear with jeans and I don't love denim on denim. And I recently wore it all over Guatemala and felt indestructible in it. It's very, very cool. Uh, also comes in green, but I think they're currently out of stock and won't be back in stock for a while because it's a small company in Japan. But I, I really like it and I just had to find somewhere to mention the Tanuki Yoroi jacket. So if it's on sale and you want a more breathable canvas jacket, because black canvas doesn't breathe super well, um, yeah, definitely check out Tanuki. All right. That's it. That's officially the end of the video. Um, thank you for watching this far. Uh, let me know what your favorite wax jacket is below and why. And uh, make sure you subscribe as well because I got a lot more jackets and uh, heritage bags and a lot of boot stuff as well coming up.